Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings to you all in the most precious name of our common Lord. This uh, morning, I invite you for the meditation upon the women. Perhaps to limit our subject, women of the church. Women within the community wherein we have our faith exercise. Women as change makers or the agents of change. This subject is quite uh, like an ocean and uh, we cannot design the borders to the subject as you know, it can go into any levels of depth when we delve our thoughts in this very precious subject. But one thing is certain that it is inevitable that women and men together as partners build the human community and build a new tomorrow for our successive generations. It is in that context I invite you for a few thoughts on the women, women as change makers. The text I have chosen is from Johnson John's Gospel our Gospel according to St. John chapter 4, verse 39 to 43. I would like to read for you. Many Samaritans of that town had believed in Jesus on the strength of the woman's testimony when she said, He told me all I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came up to him, they begged him to stay with them, and Jesus stayed for two days, and when he spoke to them, many more came to believe, and they said to the woman, Now, we no longer believe because of what you told us. We have heard him ourselves, and we know that we really, or he really is the savior of the world. Jesus is the savior of the world, is the ultimate faith of a particular community, of Samaritans and the central focus is on the conversion of a Samaritan woman. Are you not surprised to see or observe that there is no name to this woman, Samaritan woman, simply say Samaritan woman. There are plenty of women who can be called Samaritan woman. While we ponder our thoughts on this very subject of the women's participation in our faith journey, women and men are the partners in the mission of Jesus Christ, and women and men in God's liberating act. More than the identified women in the scripture, there are innumerable, innumerable number of women in the Bible who are not named at all, and are with no identity, of their own. To cite some of these names, you know, like there are Noah's wife, Lord's wife, Potiphar's wife, Pilate's wife, Queen of Sheba, you know, Pharaoh's daughter, great woman of Shunem, widow of Sarapet, you know, women with issue of blood and a Syrophoenician woman, and the Samaritan woman, and the like. Many, if we name them, or if we count them. Not only in the scripture, but also there are, when we talk about Indian context, we only talk about the freedom fighters in our nation. Seldom we talk about the spouses of these freedom fighters. In several cases, several of them also accompanied their spouses into the into the prisons. They also experienced, you know, the kind of uh, uh, you know the prison life, um, like that of uh, Jawaharlal Nehru's wife Kamala Nehru, and many many women uh, who have accompanied their spouses from the grassroots level. There are individual women without the mention of the spouse, their counterparts also have undergone this. We don't name them at all. In India, 
we always uh, you know say yatra naryastu pujyate tatra ramanti deva but by saying that we have bipolarity of looking at the women on one hand you know you worship the women admire them and uh, you know kind of adore them as god and goddesses on the other hand you know you don't look like looking uh, you don't uh, you know seem to be worshiping or admiring or even respecting the women on some of these uh, uh, some of the levels of human life uh, this is where we recall the primitive religions in this nation the indigenous uh, uh, worship in our country begins with only women as goddesses like that of Ind- 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 indus valley civilization and not only in the indian uh, civilization but also in other civilizations but at the same time we know how women are ill treated and disrespected like a commodity which is a great paradox we may not do justice in taking you know every women uh, figure or profile in the scripture for our meditation but there are a few again i would not say that they are remarkable or identifiable but i have chosen according to my own and uh, my own choice but ultimately would like to bring out some of the salient features for our meditation and for our thinking how women are the role of the women is very significant and very pivotal in making up of this our society a more uh, meaningful and a more uh, what is it called efficacious change i said the title is women as change makers i would say change is inevitable that is my slogan too change is natural change is visible and change challenges the status quo that is very important observation my mother as woman is responsible for the change of my life in my growth the change in attitudes my behavioral patterns how i begin to look around my community how i begin to discover various values in the society and there are teachers and friends outside who made me what i am today like that of any human being like that of any mother therefore the woman is a strength in the society like she acts as a constant solace to the entire family at different shades and different experiences of our uh, family experiences she generates you know tons of hope for the future because she is the embodiment of various characteristic features when we talk from the christian perspective i would see that woman is the embodiment of god's compassionate love god's sacrificial love wherein like in that of jesus who emptied himself several of the mothers who empty you know themselves for the sake of the empowerment of their children and the family and she contains the uh, vulnerability and uh, you know she experiences the culture of silence sometimes she may not talk she may be only acting like a silent person and some very occasionally like that of the nature reacting you know in the you know surroundings the women also acts and revives we have witnessed all these characteristic features in the bible dozens of stories and life profiles symbolizing the act of being agents of change or the channels of change i am not surprised when we look at the book of uh, numbers chapter 27 the daughters of zelopehad for the first time perhaps in the history of humanity would be ascertaining their rights and claiming are demanding to rewrite the law of inheritance of property of the fathers which normally goes to only the men folk in the family and it is in this context you know what is change a change i would say 
from the primitive society let us compare it 100 years before and 100 years later what an enormous growth of literacy in each of our regions in this country and the growth of the education institutions and other institutions wherein there are plenty of opportunities to women and the girls to become what they want to be the possibilities that are before them are enormous and countless it is for every girl child to capture such an opportunity to become what she wants to be but unfortunately we see today in the society only a few whom we can number but we should not be satisfied by seeing these a few of them in the in the midst of you know millions of the women amartya sen the nobel prize winner says there are 10 millions of women who are missing in the history of humanity where are they either they start their curbing of their lives from their birth until they die as the senior mothers who are thrown out of the families that is the malady and that is the plight and that is the agony of women in general in our country leaving out some exceptional comfortable women in our you know society i have chosen only a few couplets of women from the bible particular from the old testament you know they represent certain sections of community like uh, in exodus first chapter verses 15 to 20 you find two characters shifra and puva which simply means beautiful and joy of the parents they are the employees of the egyptian government they are the midwives today we can call them as nurses who are officially appointed for a crooked implementation of the wicked plan of uh, you know the royal uh, king of pharaoh because he could not bear the you know over growing uh, population of the hebrews around and therefore he wanted to liquidate the male uh, life uh, in and around Egypt. Therefore, Pharaoh ordered these two midwives to liquidate or to kill all male children among Hebrews as soon as they were born. Exodus, you know, 121. But when you look at that, these two women feared to God, receiving the royal command to commit murder of the children. These two midwives were caught up between the two fires. On one hand, it is the god of the Hebrews. On the other hand, it is the tyrannical king of Egypt. Let me quickly bring out some of the observations. They were God-fearing. They are the striking witnesses against any kind of violence. And they respected God's image in every child irrespective of their cultural identity and did not go against God's will. Therefore, they prevented a genocide of children by the Egyptians. And finally, they exhibited their courage in answering to God, a king, in uh, Exodus 1, verses 18 and 19, which gives a serious thought in a very funny manner they give the answer even before you know the nurses arrived there the hebrew women were very clever in giving birth to the children friends though it appears to be a little uh, you know humorous but then there is a serious concern on that the two women at the risk of their lives because they are doing against the will of the king but still they were doing in fear of God, something acceptable to God. I would like to put the life and ministry of the entire healing ministry in our land. You know, several thousands and thousands of nurses spread all over the land. 
and going out of this land to work in different countries, you know, risking their lives. Perhaps some are going only on the commitment of their profession. Some of, some of them may, may be going, you know, to earn money. But in both ends, you find there is a risk in their lives. You know, they are entering into a new culture, a strange place, in the midst of strange people, you know, different foreign languages. And imagine their dutifulness in the crisis when we want to immediately pinpoint the present context, their commitment in the presence of this pandemic crisis, their responsibility, their dedicated service, day in and day out, even sometimes leaving their families, you know, they are spending their time for this holy vocation and ministry of healing the people. I would like to see what kind of change that they are bringing is simply reflected in their ministry, the compassion of God, the reflection of compassion of God in their own life and ministry. Whatever salaries they receive, but not all of them receive the government salaries, but there are only uh, some, but several of them work for the non-governmental salaries, whether they are high or low but they are engaged in this ministry of extending you know, the gracious touch of God through their catering to this healing ministry. In the second book of Kings, chapter 6, we find a different story here altogether. There are two women who are not named at all. When the king ben of Syria sees Samaria and the whole city was captured, and no human being was going out and no human was coming in. And there is no trade, no commodities are going inside, no food products are coming into. Even the dust and dirt of this town are thrown, you know, you can, uh, I mean, you, you, you cannot throw the dust out, which means there is stinking smell. Everywhere it is, you know, shabby. It is just like a curfew that no human movement is happening. The king himself, you know, was restless and he was walking on the wall knowing, you know, no, having no, uh, what is it called, help in hand. You know, in uh, verse 25, chapter 6 of 2nd book of Kings, says a donkey's head was sold at 80 shekels and silver. Cup of a dough means the dung of the uh, dough was sold at 5 shekels of silver. What is it called in Isaiah? Rabshaka to the Jews, which is hated by them, but had to eat in famine. You know, 2, two Kings chapter 18, 27, Isaiah 36 verse 12, you know, in the thick famine, not knowing what to do, in a helpless way, king was wandering on the wall. Having looked at the king, two women went there and one woman was shouting, calling king for a help, asking him to intervene in their crisis and to bring justice to this woman. The story is like this, excruciating the pain of this mother with feelings, she tells, look, we both in the midst of this famine agreed to kill our children and eat. Accordingly, yesterday, we killed my son and we cooked and ate. And today this lady has hidden her son somewhere and she has, she has uh, uh, evaded the responsibility. My Lord King, do justice to us. What is the meaning of justice here? How do we define the word justice in this context? King became maddened. <laughs> the woman said, bring justice, O oh Lord. In the, in the thick, in the midst of this thick famine, you know, her plight was to kill the child, her flesh and her blood. 
the present pandemic caused similar situation while thousands of men and women the migrant workers on the road walking hundreds of miles without any hope of food water shelter and no one to talk to them on the way even the famine also you can see in the recent history of ethiopia and sudan sometimes in some places in india people changed their lives to begging prostitution robbery killing etc friends and my co believers the context is very similar wherein the plight of the woman seek always and constantly for justice justice to the single mother justice to a woman laborer justice to a woman beggar justice to a woman stranger justice to a torn and lonely woman in this nation for protection for shelter for dignity for food and the like united nations has you know given the a big list of principles to do and not to do like that is that of right to equal right to be equal right to food right to clothing right to shelter right to good health and the like the two women represent millions of women in this land seeking some kind of care and compassion from the society with a little bit of respect and dignity friends the picture on the other side is something different which is very positive and very you know joyful the other two women whom i am bringing are no less than justice deborah and emperor esther from the book of judges and fourth chapter you find deborah which simply means a bee a queen bee and israelites were bred to be in operation of jabin king of canaan and jabin was living in hazor and his army commander by name sisera sisera and who became so wicked and very oppressive to the israelites and deborah who was also a prophetess ascertained herself you know to be a leader and prophet you know for the people and uh, she listened and counseled the people at this uh, you know trauma sitting under the palm tree in the hill country of course she was named identified as wife of lapidoth but then in this case here lapidoth must get identity from her from his wife deborah a rare uh, you know a happening a rare example she was chosen by yahweh to free the people from the oppressor a fearless patriot wherein she gathered all her friends and she like a bee who gave honey to them a good news to them good hope to them like a bee she had a fatal sting for her enemies as the canaanites came to experience besides being the wife she was a prophetess she was an effective agitator she aroused national patriotism in the minds of the people and she became a ruler of all israel 40 years consistently she was a warrior an inspired heroine she was a poetess all through her life she was praising god you know her poetry was compared to that of miriam's poem poetry of praise to god she finally was a mother figure to israelites who gave assurance and confidence friends the other lady in this couplet is esther esther the persian meaning of esther is uh, you know aster means star implies like venus the good fortune star of galaxy in hebrew among hebrew women symbolizing the myrtle plant or shrub which gives fragrant you know smell 
and the Mediterranean in the region. Mordecai, in the context of the parentless child, Mordecai becomes guardian to her and then groomed her, fashioned her with a very constructive and a concrete purpose to make her queen of this nation. Byron, one of the famous poets, English poets, describes in his poetic, you know, uh, Talibur about Esther. She walks in beauty like the night of cloudless climes and starry skies and all that best of dark and bright meet in her aspect and her eyes. You know, like a black charming diamond piercing, you know, the thickness of the darkness and then bringing a great light to the people of Israel. Mordecai groomed her with full of passion and love for the nation and for God of Israel. The combined wisdom of Mordecai and uh, Esther's God-given courage became a symbol of success. She captured every possible, you know, atmosphere around her and became a very successful person, leading the country into a high destiny to bring her nation into a high-valued nation. Masterminded to kill Haman, the wicked man, to the Jews, and she delivered her nation from disaster, a mixture of charm, and she acted like you know a woman of strength and guile. And as per the recording, Esther 4, 15 to 17, my observations are that she sought divine guidance in times of difficulty and obtained knowledge from God day after day. And she was ready to renounce herself, always enjoyed cooperation of her fellow believers, which means she was not a dictator, but she was equal among the humans. A human liberator, emancipator, vigorous administrator, calm crisis manager, fearless initiator, and courageous decision maker. Deborah and Esther. And there is also another character like Esther and Zudith in the book of Apocrypha, who also, you know, represents her people for the making of a nation. Friends, in the New Testament, I quickly take two, you know, towering personalities. For all these 2,000 years, this church at large has been meditating upon and admiring their characters like Mary Magdala. Magdala means simply a tower, a towering personality. We find one among the three popular Marys according to Luke 24, Matthew 27, and Matthew 28 and Mark 16. One among the three Marys who constantly accompanied the Master, Jesus and all the twelve disciples. And she walked with Jesus until Jesus reached the penultimate point of the cross. Normally people, you know, they scatter. As you find that at the cross, except John, that no, you know, disciple was available. But she was, with, you know, in that crisis also near the cross. She was at the resurrection. That means experiencing the fact of empty tomb. Shelving out all the misconceptions about her, she remained at the cross until the body was taken down, laid in the tomb. According to John, the evangelist, she was the first witness to the resurrection. She indeed was one with the disciples at the act of ascension, as per Acts 1, 6. According to Eastern tradition, she accompanied Mary, Theotokos, the mother of Jesus, to Ephesus and there she died and her relics were brought to Constantinople in the 9th century. And she was named as Apostle to the Apostles, 
equal of the apostles are some of the titles for simply her courage to follow jesus her witness till she breathed last her radical transformation accepting this transformation within her life to be a torch bearer of her faith in jesus christ proclaiming the emptiness of the tomb friends it is here we would like to bring about the role of samaritan woman also the samaritan woman unfortunately again there is no name to her but she is as equal as mary of magdala and her tremendous knowledge of scripture and pers- you know perseverance in dialoguing with the lord until she received the truth of coming of messiah and she discovered perhaps it is the unique place where a person was discovering jesus as messiah and with which faith she ran into the village the scripture which i read this morning and then brought the entire village you know in the presence of jesus directing them showing them the savior and the messiah who was to come friends any change which we expect it requires education health safety and empowerment of the people particularly the for the women and we need you know to visibly discover this change in our lives we have witnessed you know different characters in the bible and we have seen many other women in the bible whom perhaps like i cannot explain many hanna who represented the liberation of women deborah and esther who represented and brought self food and independent independence mary of magdala and samaritan woman dedi- you know who are symbols of dedication and faith in jesus christ you will find in the acts of the apostles dorcas and lydia who lived in you know in a kind of uh, uh, in the primitive church as women leaders of empowerment within their given context mary the mother of jesus the crowning personality among all the women we would say that according to elizabeth you know you are the woman with a definite article never before and never after you and you are the women who are blessed try benedictus and mother who envisioned a radical you know revolution wherein we will find in the uh, in her uh, magnificat wherein she sees the transformation of the uh, values the one who was to born shown power of his arm he has rooted the proud of heart he has puffed down the princess from the thrones and exalted the lowly the hunger he has filled with good things the rich sent empty away from the mary magnificent said luke's gospel chapter 1 verses 46 follow and it is in this context you will find the this unique woman whether you call it theotokos or christotokos mother of divine jesus or mother of human jesus she remains as the mother the mother with all these human qualities of any woman from down to earth qualities you know who wept in her agony like any other mother when her son is crucified and she had a lot of admiration on jesus as and when people told her many stories about the you know these miracles and divine acts but then her expectation of jesus was something different she had to change her life to suit to the bitterness the reality given to her she remained as mother of jesus and ultimately she remained the mother of the universal church friends the women leaders about whom we have talked and about whom we may not really bring 
into our you know short time given time but look at their you know profiles as guardians of tradition in our human community who teach us what is civilization from our home and as you enter into this wide open human you know sphere you begin to realize what your mother taught you it comes into a reality the church has witnessed great visionary women who remained as pioneers in the field of education the medical service and other social activities which radically brought a change in the indian society the first of all i would bring the lady aida skandal who came into this land as an ordinary girl daughter to a, a missionary who was in a helpless state could not do anything to a muslim woman came for delivery because he was neither nurse nor a doctor and at the loss of the life this girl's mind was so moved she decided to go back and get her equipped as a medical doctor came back and she started a hospital and a medical college in 1900 and today 120 years of par excellence of the medical intervention in this land goes to the credit of Ida Scatter there are great women to remember you know mother teresa you know these women appeared to be coming from outside the land but they lived here they died here they gave their life their sacrificial life and today mother teresa becomes a universal figure someone was trying to teach about mother teresa oh she is the founder of sisters of charity <laughs> before she became sisters of charity founder but we need we need to understand that in a helpless way neither her church nor her institution supported her she was all alone when she carried you know the unbearable weight on her back when she embraced the lepers when she brought you know these unfortunate persons into her shelter giving them a last touch of care and compassion giving them a good evening in their life she became a mother what others were telling the founder of institute later on the methodology like the institute of sisters of charity came but she did not come into this country to start that institution friends there are great women in our land savitri bai phule a great educationist to say from indian context there are plenty of women missionaries who started education institutions towards empowerment of the girls millions of girls who got their you know strength and who stood on their feet today anandi bai gopal ram joshi Way back in 1886, she did her post-graduation in Pennsylvania and came back as a medical professor, the first woman, and followed by Muthu Lakshmi Reddy, and she was born in 1886. And to succeed this great line of healing ministry, Hilda Lazarus, and who succeeded Ida Scudder in the you know medical college. CMC and then she served in the army both in first and second world wars pandita rama bai and who with great faith fervent zeal making available this word of god to all marathi speaking believers friends what do we look into what is this change that we are expecting the change makers and these are all change makers in their own respective areas taking people from dependency to independence self sufficiency from vulnerability to self empowerment from domestic and social violence to you know kind of uh, self food and dignity these are the women leaders you know initiators pioneers who break broke the ice broke the culture of silence is that true they have paved way to rediscover the lost values and respect 
underlining the right to equal and right to education, right to good health and what not. To name many of the women, in short of time I, I cannot bring many. Medha Patkar, Kiran Bedi, Kalpana Chawla, Sunita Williams, great astronauts, you know, who NASA has taken them. Durgabai Deshmukh, Sarojini Naidu, the Indian Nightingale, Rajkumari Amrit Kaur. I would even bring Lata Mangeshkar and Subalakshmi, great melodious voices of this land. Mary Kong, the one woman, you know, even after marriage, you know, she stood like a strong, you know, uh, person who ascertained, you know, and remained as a champion in this nation for boxing. You know, Bachendra Pai, the Everest mountaineer twice, you know, in her life. These are the great women whom we should remember and many, many more. In every context, there are women. My mother is heroine to me. Your mother is heroine to you. They are the leaders. They are the heroines. They are the visionaries. They paved way for every child in this nation to become what we are. Let us remember all great women missionaries who laid their lives here in this earth, leaving their nations. The women leaders of the church of Easter years, you know, who laid foundation for faith in Jesus Christ. Our mothers, our grandmothers, our great-grandmothers, who remained as inspiration of faith, tradition, and prayer towards giving us a culture, a different tradition. Remember that. In your quietness, God's divinity could be seen in them. God's compassionate touch we experience from them. And sometimes I dare to say that, you know, on one pole, the whole tenderness, the compassion, the love, care of God is embedded in the woman, in our mothers. And perhaps a different type of uh, uh, human uh, expressions are given to men. But without the participation of women, the endeavor of the humanity is incomplete. Is incomplete. It is both the women and men together we make our human complete, com human community complete. And at this context, let us, you know, bring our thoughts towards discovering the role, the holy role of all these women who make our nation, our communities, our churches, our families complete with their presence. Respect, let us respect them and let us encourage them. Let us give them more freedom for a better performance towards transforming this human community. Changes are constructive building up of the human civilization and culture to bring glory to God. Shall we pray? Lord of gracious and loving Heavenly Father, this morning, each one of us we remember our mother, our sisters, our spouse, all those you know with whom we engage our lives in making our families, our communities, our churches, even our nation as a meaningful and a powerful one. Lord, it is in this context, O oh Lord, that we call all these great women and those women who could not become great, those women who are named and identified and millions of the women who do not have any identity. Standing on the crossroads, Lord, we beseech you that you are the one who name everyone, O oh Lord. 
and it is our humble prayer that you name them identify them and to each one oh lord give your value and your boon to be the instruments and channels of your grace to bring a radical change in our community which is acceptable by you to bring glory to you in jesus precious name we pray amen